And that one is again easy to do since no matter what point I'm on, on the axial line that I am, no matter what point, I'm equidistant from all parts of the ring. You see, if you form a triangle here, uh, D radius R, I'm equidistant here, R squared, uh, this is a 90 degree angle, right? So this is a ring that's coming out like this, out of the board and going in. And if I draw a, a radius here like that and like that, that's going to be a 90 degree angle, even though it doesn't look like on the board, right? This is a ring that's like coming out like this. And I um, want to find the potential at that point on a central axial line. So the, no matter if the ring is uh, uniform charge or non-uniform charge, it's still going to be the same. So it's going to be, uh, V is going to be KQ over square root of R squared plus D squared. Okay, so this is the potential at the central axial line for a ring, for a ring charge. As distance d away as the limit as d goes to zero is what if, if if I go to the center of the ring what's the what should the potential be kq over r they should all add up this is not the case with electric field if you remember the electric field formula we got if you take the limit as d goes to zero for the electric field, it should be what? Zero, exactly. So this one is not like that. If you put d is zero, you get kq over r. And the limit as d goes to infinity, it should behave like a point charge. So if you go to d goes to infinity, this looks like insignificant, and you have kq over d. OK? Um, for this one, I will not ask you to find the potential at some general point, because then it's, a, it's an integral that's nasty, OK? It's a little, much harder to do. So the only one is the central axial line. OK, now let me.